morning, everybody. Um, I'm Chaim Pinto. I'm the CTO at Bank of Poalim, and I'm here to talk to you about uh, how we work with fintechs and how that aligns with uh, the cyber ecosystem. Um, hope you enjoyed the three-minute uh, break as we were working through the technical difficulties. Um, just to show you that we're dealing with that every day and you have to come prepared. So apparently HDMI doesn't work well over here, so I'm happy I brought the old, good old trusted VGA connector as well. Uh, <laughs> sometimes the newest is not the, the, the best. Um, so, so I want to share with you kind of the, uh, the world that I live in. Um, I joined the bank about two years ago, and right about when I joined, uh, I, I met this at the paper. It was in Globes. Uh, phenomenal uh, uh, article about the cease and desist and the demise of banking in the world and particularly in Israel. Those of you who are not Israelis, these are all the logos of all the major banks in Israel shattered on the floor while everybody is honed into their applications and mobile devices uh, rendering banking obsolete. And, and, and that was, uh, was kind of cool when I saw that because I realized that the wave of innovation has started. Um, and, and we're going through the wave of adoption and, and the standard process around uh, promises, pie in the sky, uh, rose colored shades where everything is, is beautiful and pink and, and we see the, the bubble inflating and the promise of, of entrepreneurs walking around Rothschild Boulevard reinventing banking. Um, and then eventually starting to meet reality as we move forward. So I don't have a lot of time. Uh, three minutes were wasted on technical difficulties. So I'm, I'm going to offer you um, five waves of disruption, okay? And give you our standpoint or our viewpoint around how we're dealing with that and how that affects uh, cybersecurity um, in, in, in our stance. Uh, so, so let's start with fintechs. First and foremost, I hate to disappoint you guys, we love fintechs, okay? The fact that there, there's no question, the question is off the table. Friends or foes, frenemies or whatnot, no. Fintechs are probably the best accelerator for banking innovation. Uh, we recognize that and we adopt that, that and, and, and we embrace the entrepreneurs with both ends. In fact, I have a unit that is directly and solely focused on working with the fintech ecosystem, by far. Dedicated unit that does only that uh, um, in, in, in my world. But we, we, we look at fintechs a little differently. So I try to simplify things. We deal with money, right? As a reminder, we're a bank, right? As long as money makes the world go around, uh, it's probably one of the most a uh, valuable assets that we have out there. And, and what I try to do is, I try to divide the fintechs into two worlds. Ones who touch the money and those who support the money. And it's very important to make that distinct, the distinction because if you touch the money, we're going to have a very different conversation. So I'm, I'm going to have the conversation with you, but I'm going to talk to you about all the scary stuff, right? The scalability, reliability, regulation, big heavy regulation, right? Uh, we're going to talk about uh, identification. It was said over here, if somebody hacked into your bank account and some of the money was stolen, we're insured for that. We have processes in place. Not that it happens every so often, right? But, but things happen. And, and we have over 100 years of legacy around us or behind us, and we learned our lessons, so we're prepared to that. So if you touch the money, Please be aware that you are walking in the big boy's pool and we're going to have a very similar conversation because we don't, know, we don't want to expose our clients. If you support the money, which means that you are a component within the technical solution that we're offering the clients, then we're talking about a very simple conversation, mostly architectural. I want to understand where you fit with my value proposition and technical solution. And then we're down to the T's and C's. We're going to talk terms and conditions, and we're going to get a purchase order, and we're going to integrate you into our stack, and that's going to be phenomenal. Because if I have a solution that in the back end leverages some entrepreneurial uh, uh, invention, then it's, it's a win-win situation. By the way, we do have that in production. You might not see that. It might not carry a logo. It might be a... a uh, uh, a white label solution, but we definitely leverage some of the local innovation over here in our solutions and in, in our innovation. 
The second thing that I want to talk about, the second wave, is the wave of change and the fact that change uh, is the only constant and there are big pillars driving change within the financial industry. Um, these are the main ones that we're talking about, virtual coins and all the technology around it, uh, the disruptive technologies that are coming in, and we'll talk about some, some examples in a bit. The big four, we talked about the Amazons, the Googles um, uh, of the world that are kind of winking towards uh, financial services, but then when they hit that regulatory threshold, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they meet what banks deal with on a daily basis. Um, the digital crowd, oh man, the digital crowd, that's when I look at this room, it's a lot of you guys, those who were born with an iPad in their hands, those who cannot even imagine the world before the internet came along, uh, or, or when we couldn't carry the internet in our pocket, that, that's, that's absolutely amazing, and we have to adopt to that age. And, and lastly, morality and corruption, and morality and corruption is something that is very uh, devious. People think as we increase our innovation uh, uh, threshold and we invent new products, then we tackle more and we tackle corruption head on and, and we block all those attack vectors that are being formed out there. I have to say that, that it's kind of a, a, an equal game over here. We try to stay ahead of you know, the black hats over there, but, but we only do that for a certain period of time. We totally recognize the fact that they will gain um, up to us and, and they will try to leverage every single uh, security mechanism that we put out there. So, so we're not you know, fooling ourselves thinking that you know, we, we have, oh my god, five minutes. All right. Um, yeah, this is going to be a short one. All right, number three, the corruption element. Uh, recognizing that corruption is out there. Uh, blockchain as a trust platform was invented literally as a trust platform in 2008 and only recently has uh, uh, got his, its, its uh, spotlight in the papers and in, in public opinion. Um, and it, it's just one of the things that, that the global corruption gauge has, has dr uh, driven uh, from an innovation standpoint. Um, I, I want to talk about the disruptors uh, to cyber a little bit because we are in cyber week and, and, and you're all interested in that. And I want to I talk about how that affects and give you some examples. We talked about uh, fintechs that are coming and the fintechs that are coming to us, they touch everything. Every single buzzword that is out there, the alphabet soup that you see over here, all of them are buzzword compliant. All of them touch a, uh, AI and AR and ML and, and, and they're all touching. Um, you know, the blockchain and the Bitcoin and everything, but, but the actual uh, decision that we have to make is which one of them is relevant and which one of them is actually uh, uh, mature enough and, and not offering vaporware or slideware and has a real solution behind it. Because when we deal with those technologies, right, look at AI as an example. Um, AI is challenging because, because the, the, the lack of predictability within the models. AI says that the machine is learning on its own and giving us eventually the results, right? Um, and, and we treat it as a black box. And if we have a black box, then it's very hard to do the anomaly detection because we have some sort of a stateful element that, that understands how the machine works. And AI is just a brain. We don't really get into how it evolved eventually. And then there's also the element of what I call moral coding. When you design an AI machine, and let's take a car as an example, uh, if your car is self-aware and drives, and, and it sees a target on the road, there, there are three disruptors. There's a man walking, there's a dog, and then there's, there's a, a, a wall that, that, that is standing over there. And it needs to make a decision. It needs to hit, it has to hit one of three. Which one will it hit, right? The human, the dog, or the wall. Now let's change this because you're all thinking about what I don't want to say, right? And let's change that to an 80-year-old person and a 20-year-old person and a wall. Now what will the car do at that point in time? Maybe it will hit the wall and think, you might survive the crash, right? I don't know if I want to drive an element that has the power to decide whether or not I live or die. It's a challenge. And we have to get into that and deal with it. Um, VR, the personal space, the data privacy, dealing with, with things like trigger images that actually make the VR world uh, go around. If you don't understand what a trigger image is, I'll catch you in the break and, and give you an example and even a little demo. Um, blockchain, the identity management element. We all talked about blockchain as a great buzzword, right? Everybody's talking about decentralizing. Remember the first slide? Banks are obsolete and that's it. Actually, 
the biggest challenge in blockchain in order to make it work with regulation is centralizing the decentralized architecture. I mean, if you want to have regulation, you want to have assurance as, a, as an end user, you have to have somebody who will supervise that. Also, there, there's rules and laws in the world, so the right to be forgotten is critical in the general, distributed general ledger. A blockchain system only appends, but yet under the, U, uh, the, the EU regulations, we have the right to go to providers and ask them to remove our personal data from their databases. In blockchain, that's not really how it works. So, so we have to squeeze everything into two minutes. All right, um, blockchain. Um, this is the last element, uh, open banking. Uh, you heard conversations and you realize the theme. Um, the old model where you had you know, a financial institution and the client, and we, have a, we had a direct relationship with the client, we decided the products, we decided how we roll out the products, we decided you know, what channels to, to expose the product and the terms and conditions. So you took a loan, we owned the loan, we had the relationship we dealt with you for 10, 20, 30 years, depending if you took a mortgage. That world is changing and we're seeing the fintechs and others. We talked about IoT a little bit, I heard over here, smart economy smart houses. I mean, we're looking at everything becoming smart and there's an entire ecosystem surrounding the financial institutions only because money makes the world go around. So money is there to fuel that, that, that change and the relationships with the businesses. But in fact, because they see the ability and the technical maturity has come to the point that they can actually start giving little uh, 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 slivers of financial services, um, they're sitting between the banks and the clients, and now the client has an option whether or not to use a fintech to consume some financial services. In fact, uh, you would expect the banking to take that, build a shield around it, and try to uh, fight that change. And, and, and I started my, my, my piece over here by saying that's definitely not the case. So what we really are trying to change the bank into a place where we have that open API, we have that, that interface, and we have that conversation with the fintechs on both sides of the equation, right? Even if you touch the money or you support the money, we have the vehicles in place to work with because eventually the goal is to serve the client to the best of our ability and not fight the change, but actually leverage the change to bring everybody into the next phase of innovation. So, do I have coders in the room? Anybody, mathematicians? Please, somebody raise your hands because I made this specifically for you. Thank you on the left side of the auditorium. Uh, this is what we're trying to do, okay? <laughs> so, th there, is, there is a simple rule. That's it, that's my last slide, I promise. So, there is a simple rule and we try to adopt to that. And, and those of you who do not understand what this is, it just says, be greater than average. And as long as you align with that, everything is going to fall into place. By the way, I stole that from NASA. It's not mine. You see it's hidden over here. Uh, that's their motto. Uh, you asked over here, how would we attract good talent into the banking industry? Guys, in our innovation labs, you will have the most fun that you will have out there. Because being the largest bank in Israel, we are partnering with the regulators, with the government authorities, and, and others to drive the Israeli economy. It's not every day that a computer science graduate or a mathematician has the opportunity to shape a, a country's economy. Right? Thank you very much.